I want to tell you a story of the old days, when people were different from now. Some Eskimos hunted the caribou with arrows. We hunted with spears and killed them at the crossing place. In our kayaks, we paddled fast to catch him. The eyes of the hunter were keen. The news traveled quickly when the caribou had been seen. Then the hunt would begin. Soon the kayaks were floating and quickly the hunters paddled across the lake to meet the caribou. My father told me that caribou were not plentiful in our part of the country. Only a small number came to us each season, crossing the rivers and lakes as they journeyed in search of food. The caribou has always been a great friend to the Eskimos. To honor him, my father made a song. And when I grew old enough to understand, he gave the song to me. Let my breath blow a song of the animals I have caught. Let my song praise the caribou as I paddle my kayak at the crossing place. There is joy in feeling the sun when it comes once more to the great world. There is thankfulness when the caribou follows its ancient way. There is gladness in feeling the swift water of the lake as we hunt the caribou at the crossing place. My father told me about the times of great want, when the caribou did not follow its ancient way. But he told me also of the good times, when the caribou felt heavy on his back. He said, then we had delicious meat, and his skin made us clothing and tents. His bones we used for sewing needles, and for many other valuable things. The seasons change and the wind grows colder. The snows come and the ice grows thick on lake and sea. My father told me then about his sled and how he mended the runners with bones from the caribou. As he worked mending his sled, I remember how my father told me stories. My father was a great storyteller. Once he told me about the bones of a caribou and what happened to a hunter of long, long ago. One day, said my father, a hunter found a caribou at the crossing place. Kill me with your spear, said the caribou. It is your right to kill me because you are hungry and must fill your belly. Take my skin and use it to make a fine tent. Only one thing I ask of you. Keep my bones beside the crossing place so that my spirit may pass over the water and join my friends in the afterworld. Do not split my bones or scatter them. Then may your spear always be fortunate. The world is full of sadness, said the hunter, and to bring you joy at least, I will do as you ask. Your bones I will leave at the crossing place. May your spirit always be thankful. Then he killed the caribou and took the meat home to his family. The meat filled their bellies and the skin made a fine tent. But his sled needed mending and his wife grumbled that she needed sewing needles. What you say is undoubtedly true, said the hunter. But I made a promise and the bones of the caribou must be left at the crossing place or his spirit will be angry. But his wife had a bad temper and spoke in a harsh voice. In the end, the hunter grew tired of her talking and agreed to use the bone of the caribou. He made fish hooks, sewing needles and knife handles. He split the bone and used it for sled runners and made the sled strong with caribou horn. But alas, from that time forward, the hunter had no luck with his spear. His fish hooks caught no fish. When his wife used the needles, her sewing was bad and the runners of his sled wore away quickly. The hunter became very poor. In the end, they journeyed to a faraway place and no one ever heard of them again. Said my father, you must never anger the spirits of the dead. I blew a song to the caribou. I honor his spirit. 
Therefore his bones are the bones of a friend, and my sled will travel smooth and quick. The caribou was not angry, nor will his spirit turn aside my spear. Now I will show you how we split the skin of animals, said my father. I will show you how to make lines or thongs for tying. Then he showed me this, and his hand was steady and sure. My father told many stories of the hunt. He praised the caribou and made many songs and poems. He said, we must always do honor to those who help us and bring us gifts. The caribou will give you his coat. The skin is strong and warm. When the sled needs mending, when I needed strong sinews, when my children needed boots, when I needed a tent, or meat to relieve my hunger, then I asked my friend and came to him. In my ears the wind is singing. I hear the song of a distant place. In my ears the dogs are barking. Our sled will carry us far away. I hear a song from a distant land. I must load the sled and be gone from here. I will load the sled with a hungry child. My sled will carry us far away. That fall, when the mist came down from the hills, we made camp near the crossing place. My father and my uncle made the circle of stones and put up tents. When I went to sleep, I remember dreaming of many caribou. At sunrise, my mother shook me. She said, get up, Taktu. Today is the day of the hunt. You must be dressed and ready to go with your father to the crossing place. Wake up, wake up. The men won't let me hunt, said I. You must watch and learn, said my mother. You are too young to throw a spear, but not too young to learn. Come, you must shake the sleep out of your eyes. Your father is waiting. So I went to meet my father, and my heart was glad. I found him, his sharp eyes looking all about. Together we went down to the crossing place. In the quietness of the early morning, my father told me something of the mysteries of the caribou, of their comings and goings, and how scarce they were in our part of the country. He told me about the great herds to the south, and how the noise of their hoofs was like thunder. I have seen these things, said my father, and one day you will see them too. Then we came to the crossing place and found the camp of my uncle. Excitement was big in my throat as I looked towards the other side. I cried, there is a caribou. Taktu is right, said my father. He has the eyes of a great hunter. Come, there is no time to lose. The hunters hurried down to the shore and placed their kayaks in the water. As I stood there watching, my desire was great to be with him.
watched the swift kayak of my father until it was far out in the lake. Back and forth he paddled as he chased the caribou. Desperately, the animal tried to evade my father's spear and make for the far shore. This can be a time of danger for the hunter. Sometimes a caribou will suddenly turn on the kayak and rip the covering with his sharp antlers. If this should happen, the kayak will sink and the hunter will drown in the icy water of the bay. When my father returned, he told me about the hunt. I am ashamed, Taktu, he said. Today I was clumsy. The spear fell from my hand and the caribou was quick to leave me. This was the first animal to cross the lake, and I believe he was meant for another hunter. I blew a song in praise of the caribou, but perhaps his spirit did not hear. The spirit did hear the voice of my father. On the following day, I met him when he came back from the hunt. I knew his arm had been strong and good luck had come to his spear. Tuck to, tuck to, he shouted. I have killed a fine beast. The spirits heard my song and were pleased. Soon we shall smell the cooking and taste the meat of the caribou. And it was so. Wish that the souls of the animals I have killed would help me to send my heavy thoughts to a distance. Wish that the memory of all my great hunts might lift me out of the weakness of old age. There were pots on the fire when the hunting was over. I sat with my friends and enjoyed the feast. I remember the fire and the smell of the cooking, and my breath blew a song at the crossing place. There were stories to tell when the hunting was finished, and these are the stories of days long ago. And that is the way we used to live.